Hey YouTube, what's going on? Outdoor Gear Dad here, and we are um, in the process of making a knife. If you watched the earlier episodes, um, I've explained a little bit about my journey and wanting to learn how to make knives. I'm still really new to knife making. Um, I've probably made, I don't know, less than 20 knives. Um, but the most, the most recent episodes, we've actually been going through the process of making a knife. And so the style of knife that, knife that we're making is um, this Nesmuk style of knife. And in the previous episodes, um, we drew out our design, we cut it out of the, uh, the steel, and we cleaned it up and profiled it, and we drilled our holes and put our preliminary uh, grind on there. And so in this episode, we're going to be heat treating this blade um, so that we can make sure that it is, um, that it is strong and it can hold its edge really well. And so we'll be walking through that. Um, and we'll also be putting a uh, maker's stamp on there. So uh, let's get down to it and we'll start with putting the maker stamp on. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can mark your blade and you certainly don't have to if you're new and you're uh, just wanting to make a knife for your own personal use, there's really no need to mark it. Um, I've gotten to the point where I've wanted to mark it just because I'm, I'm making a lot. Um, I'm selling some here and there uh, just to random people. And so I want to put a marking on it that distinguishes um, this knife from others, that, that shows that I made this knife. Now, there's a, there's a handful of different ways that you can do this. Some people I will actually etch it on there, um, which I looked into, and it's kind of expensive to kind of get set up. So I went with uh, the, uh, just a stamp, right, a way to... Uh, take a design, in this case it's my initials, and we'll talk about this in a second, and just uh, put it under a press or even just take a hammer and give it a good, um, a good uh, whack. Now this steel is annealed, meaning that it's not hardened yet. So we can actually use this stamp with some pressure and maybe a hit uh, to put uh, the marking on there. But if it's hardened, it won't work. So let's talk about this stamp. So um, I just had my initials put on there, a J and a D. You'll see that it's inversed so that when I lay it down and I and I hit it, it will actually make, um, you know, it will do it in the right orientation. But I looked around for places um, that made these. And honestly, I found several places, but they were kind of expensive. So I jumped on Etsy and I found a Etsy store uh, called PandaCon. And I'll put it, I'll put the um, information down below and I'll run a banner here with that information. But it's a gentleman out of Russia named Alexander Smirnov. And he makes these, you basically send him a design and, um, it, and he turns these around really quick and ships it to you from Russia. So this is a hardened, uh, really hardened high carbon steel. Um, so it's, it's extremely strong and durable. It's got a really nice weight to it. And so I recommend these a lot, uh, specifically from him because uh, he's extremely communicative and um, you know got back to me really quick and worked with me on the design and the sizing and everything like that. And he turned it around and shipped it to me. Um, and it was pretty affordable too. I think it was like less than 50 bucks to get this thing done. And so I'll have this forever and I'm, I'm really liking it. So let's take this over to the Arbor Press and we'll see how it works. So I have a basic Arbor Press here that I got from Harbor Freight. And really what I'm gonna be doing is, um, I'm just gonna be placing this. And, and if you're watching this and you know a better way, please let me know because I, I've struggled with this a little bit. Um, but basically what I'm doing is I'm just going to be placing it in an area where I think would look good, which is gonna be kind of close to the end here, right before the handle. Um, and I make sure that it's flush that it's laying flat on it. And then what I do is I bring the arbor press down just to hold it in place. Now, once it's held in place here, uh, what I like to do, and let me move the camera up just a bit so you can see it here, is I like to, um, I like to give it a whack with the hammer. So I'm gonna hold this in place. I'm gonna pull it down as much as I can. I take a hammer, I'm gonna give it, I don't know, three, three to five whacks. And I'm gonna lift this up. And now you can see here, got my initials on there. It's perfect, looks great. And so this maker stamp, again, I'll put some information down below, but PandaCon is the name of the Etsy store. 
Um, Alexander Smirnov is the guy out in uh, Russia that makes these. He does an incredible job and he's super friendly. Um, we'll, we'll make sure he gets back to you very quickly. So go check them out because I've, I've been really enjoying this, especially for somebody who's new to this and doesn't know all of the, all of the cool methods for doing this. All right, so we've got that done. Now off to heat treat. Okay, so we've got our mark on our steel and now we are ready to heat treat this. Now, when you buy steel like I've been buying, um, and the steel that I um, had talked about earlier that I bought from Etsy, most of it comes annealed, meaning it's a softer steel, it's in a softer state, and you can easily grind it and manipulate it. Um, hardening it, hardening it is the process of actually taking that from that taking the steel from the annealed state and making it hard, so that it can keep an edge um, and that it can be used to you know baton wood or or, or you know really um, carve things and and hold an edge um, a lot better. So this is an area that I don't know a lot about. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you about what I'm doing right now. And if you have uh, suggestions or pointers, please do leave them in the comments below because it helps me get better as well. So um, I'm working right now with this O1 tool steel. And so basically what I do is I just get on Google and say, I type in uh, how to heat treat O1 tool steel at home. And the process of hardening this, there's a lot of resources online that explain the science behind it and what actually is happening. But more or less, you're changing the microstructure of the steel by making it really hot and then cooling it, either uh, rapidly by quenching it in, in some sort of liquid or by letting the air cool. And what that does, depending on the steel you're using, is it makes it um, hard. It hardens it to a desired hardness. And so when I got online and I looked up O1 tool steel, it's, it's fairly easy to do at home. It basically requires you to get this steel up to a temperature that makes it non-magnetic. And so for this O1 tool steel, it's about uh, 1475, 1500 degrees and then quenching it into an oil. And so I've read a lot of things online and it, you know, people were recommending vegetable oil. And so that's what I'm gonna be using today is vegetable oil. And so we're gonna make it super hot um, to where it's non-magnetic and then we're going to quench it in that oil. Um, and then we are going to actually temper it in an oven, which allows it to, uh, allows it to slowly bring down its temperature and, and stabilize it at, at a temperature for a while to get that, that perfect hardness. So right now, if I just take this magnet, you can see that this steel is uh, highly magnetic. And so we gotta get this thing screaming hot so that it's not magnetic, and then we have to quench it. So how do we do that? Um, when I first started, I was literally using a solo stove bonfire pit, and I was putting a bunch of charcoal in there, and I was lighting it, and I was using a leaf blower to just blow on there and get it super hot, and then I would bury my steel in there, until it was uh, you know, bright orange and I would check it with the magnet and then I would quench it. The problem with that was is it took a really long time and I was burning myself uh, because uh, you know, it was buried in there and I'd have to fish it out. And even though I had gloves and tongs and stuff, it was, it was just hard to do. So, um, so I got online and I looked at um, heat treating ovens and kilns and they're really expensive. And uh, some people were recommending forges. And so I started researching out forges and those are also pretty expensive and you there's ways to make your own but i didn't want to do that so i turned to etsy and i got this this is a paint can forge now i like buying stuff from etsy because i really like to support uh, people who are hand making stuff and they're diving into their craft um, and they're most of the time they're local and here in the u.s so this is from an etsy shop called cgr custom forges this is the uh, paint can forge and I've had just such a great experience with this company. Um, I reached out to them and asked them about their product. And it's um, Cindy and Chip are the owners. Uh, Chip is the one that I think makes them. And Cindy is his wife. And she handles a lot of the communication back and forth. And man, they were so good about explaining, uh, you know, this little forge and what it does and how it's made to me. And uh, so, I, so I picked one up and I've used it a couple times. And I'll tell you what. It works really great if you're at home and you're wanting to make knives and you're just getting started and you don't want to invest a ton of money. And so what this is, is it's a paint can, an old paint can, um, that, they have, um, that they have lined with a high heat mortar. Um, and then they've put a, basically like a ceramic fiberglass um, uh, layer in there. And that's high heat, it's heat resistant. And then they put a, <laughs> 
Hey YouTube, sorry for interrupting this video. I just wanted to uh, clarify a couple things. So I finished up this video and I sent it over to Chip and Cindy uh, from CGR Custom Forges. And they actually got back to me with uh, just a couple things that I actually got wrong. So I, rather than reshooting the whole thing, I figured I would just clarify a couple points. The first being, uh, I say that this forge has a steel insert. And while it is steel, it's important to note that it is stainless steel. And stainless steel has the ability to withstand heat a lot better. And so that really, um, it drastically improves the performance. So it is a stainless steel insert. The second thing is, is I, uh, I had mentioned that Chip actually makes these coffee can forges. In fact, Cindy is actually the one that makes uh, the coffee can forges and chip focuses on their larger forges um, that require welding and things like that. So uh, they're a dynamic duo. Chip does kind of the bigger stuff. Cindy handles these smaller coffee can forges and handles all of the paperwork and communications and things like that. So anyway, back to the video, but I wanted to, I wanted to stress kind of the, those important things um, so that if you were thinking about picking one of these up, you had all the details. All right, back to the video. Steel liner on the inside. So I don't know if you can see in there, but there's a steel liner on the inside and what that allows you to do is it allows you to have a, a, a more even heat in there. And what I've been noticing is that when I put my blade in here and I pull it out, it's, it's you know, the color is, is even across the blade. And I think that's really important. So uh, there's different ones you can get of this. Um, they make different models and they make even more expensive forges and things that are a little bit more uh, professional, I should say. But for like home use and getting started, this has been great. Now I'm trying to find, I had it around here somewhere the burner for it um i don't know where i put it anyway i will find it and we'll cover that um, but it comes with the combo that i bought is the forge itself no oh, i have it right here here it is so i bought the combo that comes with the forge itself and then it comes with a modified uh torch uh a modified torch tip and so what they've done is they've actually uh, bought these torch, uh, these torches that you just hook onto, you know, any propane, uh, small propane uh, bottle that you can get at Home Depot or wherever. And so this screws on, but they've modified it so that you get maximum output. And so this thing, um, this thing screams when you turn it on full. And so basically what you do is you screw this in here like this. Oop. Act like I've done this before. You turn it on, you light it, and then you stick it into this hole right here so that it goes into the forge and you let it warm up uh, you know, for a few minutes until it's, it's nice and hot. And then you put your, your knife blank in there. And so we're gonna get this started. Um, I will just say though that this, if you're looking for a way to get started, this is a great combo and it's super affordable. Um, I think it was less than 120 bucks on Etsy. So CGR Custom Forges. I'll put links down below. I'll run a banner across so you can so you can see that. Um, really happy with it. It's not huge, but I'm also not making big knives. This is like as big as I'm making. So um, this is working really good for what for what I'm doing. So let's get it fired up, and we'll talk about a couple other things, and we'll see it in action. Now, before we get going here, I do want to show you just kind of some of the things that I have, some of the tools that I'm going to be using during this process. Um, as far as the quenching oil. I got this, um, this metal ammo can from uh, Harbor Freight, super cheap, uh, like $10, $15. And what I did is I just filled it with uh, vegetable oil. So it's in there, it's got vegetable oil, and that's what I'm going to be using to quench it. Now, you do have to get this oil a little bit uh, warm, so about you know 130 degrees roughly. So uh, some people will use like a, a warmer, some sort of burner. What I do is while the forge is heating up, I just take a piece of scrap steel and I throw it into the forge until it's uh, red, you know, it, it's red. And then I, I kind of just put it in there. Um, I use these, these tongs, these blacksmithing tongs, and I just run it into the oil and then I let it sit in the bottom of that. And that seems to make the uh, oil a little bit more malleable and, um, and warms it up perfectly. So. I have some tongs, I have my oil, my scrap piece of steel that I'm gonna to use to heat up my oil. Um, I do have my magnet here. Again, this is just a Harbor Freight tool. It's just this uh, telescoping magnet here. And then I have a wire brush. So after, um, after I've heat treated and quenched it, uh, before we actually go temper it, I'm just going to get as much of the material and this kind of some of the, maybe some of the scaling off of, um, off of, the, off of the blade itself. So those are the things that I use. I also have a couple towels and things like that. 
So let's, before we actually turn the forge on, let's go inside and I'll show you how we're gonna be tempering it. All right, so we're inside my house here. Um, as far as tempering, there's a number of different ways to do it. I've found that the easiest way, based on what I've researched online and what I've watched on YouTube, is to just use a, um, a like a toaster oven, a tabletop toaster oven. Now, if you don't have a toaster oven, you can use a regular oven too, but this is smaller, it heats up faster, um, and it's a little bit easier for me to use. So temperature that I've been doing is 400 degrees. So I'm gonna set this to 400 degrees. I'm gonna hit start. And I'm gonna let this thing start warming up while we're, um, while we're out there forging. So I'm going to bring out um, this little insert and I'm gonna use this just to put my blades on when they come out so that I'm not burning myself. And then we will bring them in here and we will uh, start the tempering process. So you can see how hot it is in there now. This scrap piece of steel is almost ready. So let's pull that out and uh, warm up our oil. All right, now let's put our blade in. All right, so I got this, uh, this blade heating up behind me here. Um, so what we're gonna do is when it gets uh, red and it gets that orange color, we're gonna check it. We're gonna use the tongs, we're gonna pull it out, we're gonna use our magnet and we're gonna make sure it's non-magnetic um, along, the, along the cutting edge and the blade. And then we're gonna stick it back in. And we're gonna stick it back in for another minute or so so that it's, it's red hot again. Cause when you pull it out, it cools pretty quickly. Um, so we're gonna put it back in, get it red hot again, and then we'll quench it. So uh, let's check on this blade. See how we're doing here. All right, so we are non-magnetic, so let's stick it back in. And you can see how fast when I pulled it out, how fast it started losing that orange color. So we're gonna stick it back in there for a minute or so, and then we are going to quench it. All right, this is at the perfect temperature, so let's get it in this oil. so you can hear me here. So I'm just moving this around in here. I'm moving it back and forth. Um, and ideally, what I wanna do is I wanna get this cool enough um, so, that I can, so that I can touch it. Now it takes just a little bit of time, but if you keep moving it back around in here. Um, one thing I forgot to mention was before you sh put this into your your, uh, your forge, you should clean your blade really good. So clean it with some dish soap and some hot water and clean it up really good. And that just helps it um, not get, uh, you know, as much scaling and oxidation um, on the actual blade itself. So I'm going to get this um, cooled down just enough and then we will clean it up and start tempering it. Okay, so I've got uh, this um, so that I can actually hold it in my hand. It's still warm, which is, which is okay, you want that. You don't want it to be completely cold. Um, and I'm just gonna take a wire brush and I'm just going to um, clean up as much of this as possible. Now, some of this we'll be able to clean up after tempering, uh, but you can see there is some, some scaling and um, some light pitting that's happening on there, but um, it should be able to clean up uh, just fine on the grinder after we temper this down. So let's make sure that we clean this all up, both sides. Turn it around here. Get the handle real good. Now, if you're doing multiple blades, you don't want this thing to get completely cool. Um, and there's ways that you can keep it, you know, warm enough before you temper it. But um, since we're just doing this one, 
um, we'll just, we don't have to do that. Okay, so it's done. Um, we're gonna bring it inside and we're going to start the tempering process. Okay, so we've got this thing out of the forge. We've got it cleaned up as much as we can and now we're gonna temper it. Right now, the steel is in a very brittle state. So um, it's not in an ideal state to actually use and that's why we have to temper it because we have to kind of normalize it. So um, I have this thing at 400 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this in there. And what I do is I do, uh, I do it for two hours and then I pull it out. I let it um, just kind of air cool until it's um, you know room temperature. And then I do another two hours and then I let it air cool again. So. Let's get it in there and uh, wait for four hours. Okay, so our knife has finished tempering and you'll see now it's this, uh, it's this dark color. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but this is just from the heat treat and from the tempering and you'll see there's some like some scaling here uh, that we'll have to get off so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back over to the back over to my grinder and I'm going to use a couple different belts I'm going to use a scotch bright belt uh, which is literally like it looks like a scotch bright pad and they make different um, grits of that and that just really helps clean up the surface so I'm going to get this back to that nice uh, that nice shiny silver surface and then I'm going to redo uh, the grinds to clean it up and just finish up that grind. So the same process I'm gonna do to put the initial grind on, but now I'm actually just gonna do it a little bit more to actually finish it and put that razor edge on. Now it's really important that when you're doing this part, um, you don't get this, this blade too hot because we've just spent a lot of time heat treating this. And so we need to make sure that we don't get it too hot because we don't wanna ruin the heat treat. So every, uh, you know, every couple passes on the grinder, I'll just dip it in some water to cool it down and then take it back to the grinder. So make sure that uh, we're keeping that uh, relatively cool. Um, and before I do that, uh, I'm going to actually glue up the scales. So I picked these scales up um, online. Let me see the name of this company. AAOCustoms.com. Uh, they do some really cool, um, kind of unique scales. So this one, uh, these scales that I got here, um, let's see, I got the receipt here. Is this the receipt? Oh, maybe it's not me. That was just the little insert. Anyway, uh, I don't remember what kind of wood it was, but it's got this cool uh, resin composite in there. So I'm gonna do these scales with these blue uh, thick G10 liners. And so what I've done is I've just roughly cut out some of the liner material. I've roughed it up so that the epoxy will uh, stay really good on there. And so we're gonna epoxy these down. Um, and what I use is I just use a, um, a two-ton epoxy, a DevCon, it's by DevCon, it's a two-ton epoxy. It's got a 30-minute set time. So it gives me enough time to uh, use the epoxy, get it on there, and, um, and not have it set too fast. So I have a couple other scales gluing right now, um, so you can just kind of see, but I'm gonna mix that epoxy put it on there, clamp it down, and then let it sit um, probably overnight so that um, it can set and be a real strong hold. So I'll get these glued up. I'll get this cleaned up. And then we'll start talking about how we actually start assembling this thing. So let's go do that. Hey, what's up YouTube? Um, I am here editing these videos. I was originally gonna make this one an entire episode, do the whole knife, but I decided to break it up uh, just because it was already getting pretty long. So uh, check out the next video where we're actually gonna be shaping uh, those handles, drilling the holes, getting it all assembled. Um, if you haven't already, go down and click subscribe. It's really important that you do that so that you can see the next episode and you know when I post it. Um, and if you like this video, click like. Any questions or comments, just go ahead and put them down below and we'll make sure to get them answered. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you at the next episode.